Want to research stocks and join a community of traders that are researching stocks and looking at stocks every single day? Then join richtv.io. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CFO of Poet Technologies, Thomas Mika. How are you doing today, Thomas? I'm great, Rich. Thanks very much. Thanks again to, uh, to be on your show. Always a pleasure. Love having you guys on the show. And I want to bring everyone's attention to Poet Symbol on the NASDAQ, P-O-E-T, and in Canada under the symbol P-T-K. Now, my first question is, as the end of Q2 is fast approaching, what has the company achieved to position itself to have a very strong second half of 2022? Great. So, you know, the last last time we spoke, it was just a couple of days before OFC, which was the optical fiber conference in in, uh, March. And, you know, it turned out that that was everything we hoped it to be and more. Um, We had lots of attention from senior people in many companies that are either prospective customers of ours or prospective business partners. And so, you know, that was a great show for us. We actually had a live demo and and it did what we thought it would do. There were a lot of people who were very skeptical about our ability to deliver what we had said we were gonna deliver. And that took away a lot of the the concern or skepticism. And uh, I mean, some senior people came back two or three times to see see what we were uh, demonstrating there because they just couldn't believe their eyes about how small a package we were able to put the all of these functions into. So it, it was terrific. So that was a major event. And since then, you know, we've continued to develop along our roadmap. Um, we have samples going out to customers. We're adding customers. Um, and that's on the business side. On, on the investor side, you know, we gained a sell side analyst who's covering us, um, which is a big deal. And, you know, I personally am continuing to, to meet one-on-one with investors. Um, we added a new member of our board of directors uh, who is, is between now and the time that we have our shareholders meeting acting as an advisor to the board. Uh, Teresa Lon Endy, who is currently the chief um, supply chain person at Arista Networks. So really highly experienced person, different perspective than we've seen on our board. And that's what you need to deal with the tough questions that come up uh, about the about the future of the company, right? And which direction we should be going in. Now, analyst Richard Shannon of Craig Hallam Investment Bank recently released a report that discusses the total addressable market for POET and the many verticals the optical interposer can impact. When a report like that comes out, does it lead to more coverage? Uh, Not necessarily, but potentially. And let me me explain. I mean, we came on the NASDAQ... um, for the express purpose of gaining institutional investors uh, in the United States. And um, that's a process that you have to go through to get those investors. One of the key first steps is gaining the kind of research that Richard Shannon um, has provided. He did a 24 page report uh, based on our published information. He did a model based on what we believe we can can achieve and uh, did his own you know valuation of the company. Uh, Richard Shannon is one of the most highly regarded uh, analysts on the sell side among the investment banks um, in in the U.S. So uh, he covers a lot of the larger players in our in our industry, and uh, you know he, in my opinion he did an excellent job covering us. Um, you know, one of my tasks uh, for the first half of, of uh, this year has been to get out in front of analysts and tell them the poet story and make sure that they would cover it. And, you know, hopefully we'll have more coverage from, from other analysts, from other banks. But at the moment, we're really pleased to be part of Craig Hallam's alpha select list, 
which is a very um, uh, small list of, of small companies that have exceptional potential. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really happy to, to, to get out with, um, with Richard Shannon. It's really important for shareholders to understand that, particularly in this environment, but even in the environment that we may have had six months ago, most portfolio managers want to have an independent view of the company. And this kind of research report gives them that independent view and allows them to, to you know, not just check the boxes, but also try to understand where the company fits and, uh, and rely on that to, uh, to justify, to a certain extent, justify an investment in a company like ours, where the, you know, some of the more obvious uh, uh, indicators like, uh, you know, revenue growth and so on don't, don't yet exist, but we expect to exist. Um, and like many technology companies, you know, we're, we're out, we're providing samples, we expect to acquire customers and, uh, and we will grow, but that's a, you know, nine to 18 month sales cycle that we have to deal with. And you have to become established, you have to walk before you can run. So would you say that you now have more analysts calling you, asking you for info on the company? What I would say, say is that it, it's sort of the opposite. Um, I mean, as an issuer, as a company, we're always reaching out to, to analysts. And I've, you know, had long discussions with, uh, you know, well, more than a half dozen of the more prominent uh, analysts over the past several months. And it's not just the one time. I mean, you can go through the story one time, but you really have to stay in front of them to make sure that they understand what milestones are ahead of us and what we've achieved and to build some credibility and some rapport with those analysts. So that's happening. Um, it's happening not just with Richard, but with, with other analysts. So we're hoping to be covered by, by more companies here in, in the future. Thomas, what would you say are some of the notable strengths of the company? These could be things mentioned in the analyst report or other things that you think might add value. Yeah, so let's focus on things that I don't think are, are clearly understood uh, when I'm speaking to either analysts or, or investors or occasionally even with uh, potential customers. And, and that is that um, the technology that we've developed over the last four or five years is a platform technology. So we're, we're not developing a device. What we're developing is a means for other people to innovate using our device. We've made it very simple to uh, combine various photonic devices and electronic devices on a single chip that address different problems. And the problem that we've decided to focus on initially is the one in the data center market having to do with the speed of, of transceivers. And we're, we're giving some of our customers the ability with a platform technology to easily develop you know, additional speeds on their transceivers. So they may start at 100G but what we're giving them is the ability to relatively easily go to 200G and 400G and higher, higher speeds over the course of you know, five to 10 years in which these, these products are actively being sold. Um, I mean, even in 100G, people don't realize that that's the highest volume part of the market. And it's been going for a couple of years and will continue for another you know, five years at least at very high levels of units being shipped um, it, it, over time. So, you know, we've got lots of opportunities to intersect with the transceiver market for data centers, which is the highest growth part of the computing industry. We're also doing um, a light sources for artificial intelligence accelerator chips. So these are companies, many of them are startups, but some of them are the, you know, the big players now 
that are using light either to do some complex computations that are done better in light than they are using electronics, or they're using light to transmit data among the various chips that they have in their, in their multi-chip module that's essentially a, an inference engine that they're using for artificial intelligence. So they're making the, the deductions about, um, or the inferences, I should say, about what, you know, for, for example, facial recognition, or if, they're, if they have a camera that's taking inventory on a store shelf, it can develop those, those uh, conclusions about what to do within the camera itself, rather than going up to the cloud, having those computations done, and then coming back. Um, this is an area, this and in transceivers are areas that are driven not just by speed, but by energy consumption. So if you can come to the market with something that uses lower energy, you're gonna get attention. And it happens that our methodology of integrating these various devices on our platform actually has demonstrated that there is a reduction in energy to get the same output at the other end. So that's a, that's a big deal for our customers and for our business partners. And, and that's why people pay attention. Now, those are the two markets that we're focused on right now with products. But there are other markets where photonics is really, you know, taking, taking hold that we believe we can use our efficient uh, platform, you know, easy to design, uh, easy to integrate platform uh, towards. And those include some medical wearable technology like smartwatches, smartphones for kind of monitoring uh, purposes where light is key to that. Uh, in LIDAR, where obviously, you know, multiple lasers are used or they're scanning the horizon and getting light back and, and coming to conclusions about whether you're about to, to hit something or which way you should go and so on. So LIDAR is a big potential space for us as well. Edge computing, there are many of those but our business plan, when we look at it, really only covers the, the first two that I mentioned, which is the transceiver markets for enterprise data centers or particularly cloud data centers uh, and this artificial intelligence uh, remote light source um, activity. So those are our are, are, are markets that we're really active in right today. What can investors that are current investors in POET Technologies and potentially future investors in POET Technologies look forward to from POET Technologies in the next few months? 2022 is POET's year. And, you know, as, as CFO, um, you know, it's been a tough year for all of us in the, in the tech space and, and not just in the tech space. I mean, no one likes to see no one, want, no company likes to lose half their market cap, you know. Um, but um, you know, as I mentioned to you when when I first saw you, you know, the message is don't panic, particularly to our to our shareholders. Look, we're we're a strong company. We've got almost 18 million on our balance sheet as of uh, the end of March. We have no debt or anything that looks like debt, which is a convertible. Um, we have real products, we have real customers, and we've got a reputation. Uh, you look at us carefully, we've got a reputation for being using capital very well. I mean, we have a joint venture in which we have been able to build a production facility for our, for our platforms, for our interposer devices in China with capital that's all the capital for CapEx and OpEx is being contributed by our joint venture partner. We're contributing a narrow slice of our IP for, uh, to that joint venture. So we didn't have to spend all of that, of that capital. And in addition, when you look at other companies in our space that are trying to do what we have done, uh, you know, we've done it on 50 million. There are, and we have products. There are companies that have spent 10 
or 20 times the capital that we have invested over the same period of time and have nothing to show for it. So that's a reputation that we believe uh, you know, institutional investors will pay attention to. And that's why we believe that with products that we can demonstrate, with a NASDAQ listing that has gotten us conversations that we never would have had without it, that's what we regard as being in a position of strength. And that will only get stronger, no matter what the market does, that will only get stronger at Poet over the next six months. I can't wait to see you guys grow and evolve. I know our entire community will be watching very, very closely and carefully. I must also remind everyone that's watching that Rich TV Live is strictly for information, education, and entertainment purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, we're big fans of Poet Technologies. Once again, P-O-E-T on the NASDAQ, P-T-K in Canada. And thank you for joining us today. Thomas Mika, the CFO. We'd love to enjoy having you back in the future. If you ever have any big breaking news or anything you want to discuss, we'd love to invite you back. And thank you for joining us today, Thomas. Thank you very much, Rich. It's been my pleasure. And thanks to your audience for listening. Always a pleasure. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Love to know what you guys think about Poet Technologies. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day.